What is going on guys? Victor here, back with another Tackle Tuesday. Now, I know I have not put out a good informational video in a long time, and that is exactly what we're doing here today. So, you guys have seen me cast net ballyhoo in the past. We like to use these in South Florida, offshore, inshore, mutton snapper, dolphin, all sorts of stuff. And one of the many uses that you can use ballyhoo for is to troll offshore. Now, Brooke and I are actually gearing up to go to the Bahamas, to the Keys. We got a lot of trips planned this summer and rigged ballyhoo are something that are number one. Um, they're not always the best quality when you buy them in stores and they're really, really expensive. So I'm gonna show you guys in this video how to cast net ballyhoo, how to catch them, and then we're gonna go back to the house, we're gonna rig them up, vacuum seal them, the whole deal. So let's start by catching these ballyhoo. Now, Brooke and I have already got our chum bag out. We're anchored up in 40 feet. I'm not gonna go very in depth in this video on how to actually catch them. I do have a video will be linked in the description box below, a more in depth video exactly on how to catch them. This video is gonna be more focused on how to rig the ballyhoo. So, but I just wanted to show you guys, you know, from start to finish of how we catch these things and uh, then rig them up. So I got my eight foot net right here. And this is actually one of our sponsors, one of my sponsors, Barracuda Cast Nets. They sent this net over and I'm very excited to use it because this is literally the second time I've thrown it. And if you guys know the feeling of a fresh cast net, it always feels good. So let's go ahead and get this guy wet. What you guys just saw me do is I shook the chum bag and what this will do is it'll draw all the ballyhoo in closer because they do like to keep their distance a little bit away from the boat. You shake the bag and they just get really sucked up right close to the boat. a decent amount probably around a dozen and a half maybe two dozen ballyhoo come out here just keep trucking away get yourself a dozen every throw people rig these for wahoo people rig these for dolphin uh, you guys can grouper fish with these mutton fish with these they just are such versatile baits offshore and inshore and you got you know all different sizes as you guys see we are off the water now i'm going to show you guys how to prep this ballyhoo to rig them up for trolling so the first thing we're going to do is um, I want to get this off my chest and let you guys know I am not an expert troller, but I have done my fair share of knowledge and research on rigging ballyhoo and what this video really I want to stress with this video is to not overthink things when it comes to fishing. Being able to present your bait naturally is the number one thing, making sure there's no obstructions and to make sure things are streamlined. Just like a lure, you just want things to look the right way and that's what I really want to get through because there are a million and one ways to rig a ballyhoo. This is going to be a very basic one. So the very first thing we're going to do is, um, if you guys see ballyhoo are very long and slender like, and they have a really long intestinal tract. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your thumb and kind of just run it along here and get all of the poop out of the ballyhoo. And especially when you catch them like we did, uh, like Brooke and I did when you chum for them, uh, they will be full of poop and guts. And now the reason I'm doing this, number one, it's just nicer when you, you, know, when you rig these up and when you uh, bring them on a boat, you just don't want poop everywhere. And number two, uh, some of the videos that I have watched, people have mentioned that the the insides of the ballyhoo will actually break down the ballyhoo over time, the enzymes in there, and which will wash out your bait a lot faster. So now that we got our ballyhoo stomach empty, there's nothing in there anymore. As far as the rigging process goes, I'm going to show you guys the materials that I'm using. This is just an overview and all of the hooks and tools that I will be using will be linked in the description box below because I know I get asked a ton of comments, what did you use, what size this, what size that, so I want you guys to have that ease of access information down below. So I'm going to be using crimps, these are Bullbuster crimps, it's one of my sponsors. Um, they have a nice little kit package, so if you guys are in the market for a crimping kit, you can go with this one right here. And then I'm going to go with Mustad long shank style hooks. Now this is I mean, this is an industry standard when it comes to hooks for trolling. And the ones that I like to use in particular are these 2X strong hooks. These are the same hooks that I troll when I troll planers. They're nice because it's a thicker gauge wire and that's really, really important because fish can straighten hooks very easily, especially when you're trolling on that first run. And now lastly, our leader material we're gonna be using is 80 pound. This isn't fluorocarbon. A lot of people like to use fluorocarbon. I don't think it's that necessary, especially in this line class. So I'm using 80 pound Bullbuster mono leader. And I'm gonna do about a six foot long leader. So get about six feet going. And I'm gonna show you guys both ends. 
First thing we're going to do is start with our hook portion of the rig. And what we're going to do is take my crimp sleeve, put it through my 80 pound mono, and then next I'm going to put it through the eye of my 80 Mustad. That's the hook that I'm using. And then I'm going to go back with that tag in, put it through the crimp sleeve, and start to pull it tight. So it's, you know, as, as much as I can pull it up to here and that connection right there, now I'm going to crimp it. And when I crimp it, i got to make sure I'm using the right size crimp and the right size crimper. And I'm not crimping at the very edge of the sleeve. I'm crimping just inside of the edge of the sleeve. Do it. I flip it over and I do the exact same thing on the other side of the sleeve on the other end of the sleeve. Now what I'm going to do is I have some copper rigging wire right here. I will put a link to this stuff in the description box below as well. And, and like I said guys, don't overthink it. I got to get this copper rigging wire onto the eye of my hook and I just leave a little tag end like that and I just simply wrap it onto the shank of the hook. Just to secure it in place and do it maybe one or two more times this way. And then I take that other end of the copper wire and go in through the eye so it points out the opposite end of where the hook point is. Just like so. Here's the, the rigging part of the ballyhoo. I'm going to open up this guy's gill slit and I want to make sure that I'm not going through his gills but just on the outside of his gills. And you're going to feel it if you have a nice free path. If you're obstructed by something, you're not going in the right way. So I'm going to go in there and kind of work my hook as much as I can in there, you know, kind of judge it to how long the hook would be, and I come out the belly, okay? Trying not to tear the belly that much, and I'm gonna push the eye of my hook into that ballyhoo, so it's nice and streamlined. Not like this indented, not out here, but just like that, just so it's, you know, nice hydrodynamic, a nice profile. Now I'm gonna take this tag end of my copper wire, and this is like I said, you know, there were two million ways on YouTube on how to do this with wire, with mono, different crimps, all sorts of stuff. People put weights on them. There's so many different applications, but this is just a basic one right here. And what I'm going to do is, I, all I want to do is secure this connection to the ballyhoo. I'm going to go in the eye socket, okay, in one eye, out the other, on the bottom side of this ballyhoo. Pull, push it through. I'm going to pull it tight, and I'm going to pull it, you know, nice and snug. I'm going to do the exact same thing through that eye, out the other, pull it tight, okay? And now is where, if you're using mono, uh, this copper wire is not that stiff. If you take something little like a thumbtack, a safety pin, a needle, and I poke a hole in the lower jaw of my ballyhoo, and then I poke a hole, if you guys notice, this ballyhoo, his mouth is kind of triangular in shape. I'm going to go right where that triangle starts and I'm going to poke it right there and this is going to help get my copper wire through there. I'm going to go in the lower jaw. Okay and then another really important thing is when I'm doing this step I got to make sure that I'm not I, I got to make sure that I'm securing this mono to the ballyhoo so it's nice and flush with this so I got to make sure I'm underneath with my copper wire before I go through the bottom jaw and through the upper jaw. So I got it like that and now you guys see what I'm talking about. Now this mono is going to pull tight against the lower half of this ballyhoo's jaw, just like so. Because like I said, it's all about getting everything nice and hydrodynamic. Now I'm going to go and I'm just going to make a couple of wraps around his mouth and his bill, just to make sure no water is getting in his bill. And there you go. And that's all you do. And I already kind of cut the, uh, the mouth of this ballyhoo, or the bill of this ballyhoo, so that's what it should look like. This is the general overview. You can get as fancy as you want, as simple as you want, wire, depending on what you're trolling for, but that's what it should look like. You want it to be streamlined. You want your hook to be aligned with everything. You want to make sure that your ballyhoo is, um, you know, free, his back's broken, there's no poop or anything coming out. So this right here is a ballyhoo with a little squid skirt, and you just see that this just slides right over his bill. And what it's going to help in doing is when you're dragging it through the water, None of this is getting ripped up and it's just the, the skirt's going to take the beating before the ballyhoo does to kind of just have that water rush over it and it's going to prevent you from um, your baits getting washed out as fast. Also some people just like it because it gives it a little bigger profile, a better presentation. I'm going to go ahead and rig this guy naked 
And what we're gonna do is now, for the other end of the connection, generally when you're trolling, you're always using a swivel in that connection somewhere. And what people like to do is a snap swivel. So from your main line, from your rod and reel, a bimini twist, straight to a snap swivel. And that way, you guys are gonna see what I'm gonna put on this end of the rig. You can just interchange. You know, you, you uh, have a dolphin hit, you take your ballyhoo off, you put a new one on. And you can just keep doing that, just taking that snap swivel, unsnapping it, putting new rigs on, new rigs on. And that snap swivel prevents your line from getting twisted because that swivel uh, has that free rotation right there. So now, like I said, this is the other end, not the hook end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did before with my crimp sleeve. Um, if you guys just find your favorite knot to make a loop, you can also do that. Kind of have a little bit of a bigger loop because you are gonna be putting a snap swivel most likely in here. And I leave a little bit of a longer tag in, and all we got left to do is to just close this connection with our crimper on one side, flip it over the other side, and that's all you got. Starting from the crimp end, come down all the way over here, and there's where your ballyhoo is. All I got left to do is get these guys vacuum sealed, put them in a bag, and we are ready to go to the Bahamas. That is exactly what these baits are being rigged up for. I wanna thank you guys for watching this Tackle Tuesday, and I know you guys really appreciate it. I like the informational videos. I think they're important, and they're definitely a foundation to this channel. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and let me know in the comments section below what you guys wanna see next as far as uh, you know, gear reviews, tackle recommendations, and all that. And hopefully these baits get tight and you guys see some big wahoo, some big mahi, some big yellowfin tuna caught on these. Until that next video, guys, I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks.